Hey, Martha. You did get my wedding invitation, right? No need you to respond, but I know you're coming. I already reserved you a seat anyway. Uh, seriously? How could I not invite my childhood friend to my wedding? You're coming like it or not. I didn't even realize who was this for a second. Is this really you, Maya? Yeah, I got the invitation. I'm not attending, so scratch me off the list. You gotta be kidding me. This is the most important event of the century. Sorry, but I have something else on that day. I just can't get out of it. What? No way! You have to! No, I demand that you attend. You seem to have made up your mind that you want nothing to do with me, but I'm not having it. You're attending one way or another. If you don't attend for one reason or another, well, you know what I'm gonna do. I'll tell everyone that you're still fuming from when I took your boyfriend from the way back in high school and that you're still a childish, pity-minded juvenile. Wait, could you back up? What are you talking about taking my boyfriend? Are you seriously asking me that? Didn't you see the name on the wedding invitation? Yeah, I saw it. First time seeing that name didn't ring any bells. Where'd you meet this guy? Whoa, stop right here. Are you for real? Yeah, for real. Why so surprised? Oh, wait a second. I get it. You're pretending like you don't know the guy. And somehow you use that reason to get out of attending. Is that it? Please, Maya, I don't have time for this. Have you taken any leave of your senses? What are you saying? I'm deranged? You're the one who's not making any senses, Martha. Why are you trying so hard to erase the fact that I took your guy in high school? I don't see why you don't just accept the fact. It was long time ago, for God's sake. That's why I call taking leave of your senses if you ask me. Sorry, Maya. It's no use talking to you. Anyway, like I said, I'm busy on that day. I can't attend. End of the story. I can't reschedule. I just can't. What could be more important than your childhood friend's wedding? At least tell me that. Important enough that I turned down the invitation. Is that so hard to accept? Come on, be a pal. For old time's sake. I better get going. See ya. I'm not giving up, Martha. Yeah, whatever. I'm gonna have your place ready for you no matter what. <laughs> I knew you were going to come. I just knew it. I had no doubt in my mind that you would show up. I can read you like a book, Martha. When you get all beady-eyed about something, you won't give up until your curiosity is satisfied. In other words, you were so eager to find out about your ex-boyfriend that you had to attend or you couldn't bear it. Am I right, aren't I? I was positive you would show up, no matter how hard-nosed you were about not attending. Maya, you again? What is it this time? Just thought you may be sweating bullets right now. Don't you see your name in the register at the entrance, right? Well, Martha, have news for you. What a total clown show. To see you coming snooping around just to see your ex view from high school. Who's going to be my everlasting partner in like 10 minutes? Just leave the wedding gift at the reception desk. So sorry, no seat for you. I know I said I would have one ready no matter what, but surprise, I lied. Oh yeah, about that. So how much did you bring as a wedding gift? Of course, it doesn't even mean I'll prepare a seat for you. No need to worry about that. Why should the bride bring a wedding gift? Uh, pardon me? My ex bu as you put it, you must mean my ex-boyfriend from high school. We had our ups and downs through the years, of course. But we somehow worked things out. We even started living together two years ago, and we finally made it to this day, our wedding day. Pardon me? Martha, you're being incoherent. You do realize that, right? I'm seriously starting to worry about your mental state, Martha. You say you were living with him for two years? That's nuts, because I was the one living with him the past few years. And what's this about you being the bride? I'm sorry. I really should have figured it out. You saw me at the wedding hall, but still failed to make head or tail of the situation. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Get to the point, would you? 
I just figure out my name is really not that common. Our family names were on the wedding list at the entrance to the wedding hall. What? Wedding list? You do know that there are other weddings taking place here today. After all, that's what a wedding hall is. Or did you think you guys were the only people having a wedding here? Anyway, there's a board out front that shows all the weddings taking place today. I saw yours there, by the way. I only noticed mine out there, to be honest. Didn't even glance at it, huh? Figures? Come to think of it, the wedding planner did mention that there would be another wedding on the second floor. The second floor chapel is supposed to be twice as big and much more extravagant than the one on the first floor, which is pretty tiny in comparison. That's the one. Finally, worked it out. That's our wedding, the one on the second floor. Pardon me? Actually, I was shocked to learn that we were having our weddings at the very same wedding hall. Who would have thought? What a twist of fate, huh? But we sure were lucky that our invitations didn't screw up. Huh? Considering we've known each other for so long, our invitations were mostly business-related. So maybe that's why I guess this answers your questions on why I couldn't attend your wedding. With that said, let's focus on the proceeding of our own respective weddings, why don't we? What do you say? Talk to you again. Wait, are you nuts? What is this? What's this all about? I'll tell you this right now, Martha. My husband-to-be is not going to be yours. He's not going upstairs to marry you. You're out of your damn mind. You're his ex-flame. He's mine now. Can't you get it through that little head of yours, Martha? He loves me, not you. You must be totally delusional to go out and reserve a wedding hall and invite all those guests. And to reserve that huge chapel upstairs. You're a total disgrace. He's not dropping me and going upstairs to marry you. You're going to be standing at the altar all alone, twiddling your thumbs. Give it up, Martha. I win. Martha, pick up right this minute. What the hell is going on here? The groom didn't show up to my wedding. Did you even notice your now husband is, is a completely different person? What's about that? Oh, so the wedding planner explained everything to you in detail, I see. I asked the wedding staff to make sure you didn't barge into my wedding by mistake. Sure glad I went to the trouble. I didn't want to mention that I was having the wedding on the same day. I didn't plan it that, by the way. Didn't want taking it the wrong way and causing you to react negatively. As you tend to do. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. About this ex-boyfriend that you supposedly stole from me. That story just didn't mesh with mine. So I asked a friend of mine who went to high school hoping she would enlighten me. That guy you were supposed to marry, wasn't his name Dwayne Peterson? That's right, so what? My husband's name is Daniel, Dan Peters. The names kind of sound alike, so I figured out maybe there was some sort of misunderstanding, you know, name-wise. Huh? You still have me at a lose, Martha. What is this, some kind of joke? All right. Let me explain. As you know, I went to East Memorial High School. Yeah, obviously, and that's where I took your boyfriend, Dwayne Peterson. I say it now, but the reason why I took him from you is because I couldn't stand it with you to get a guy before me. That's why. Dwayne was attending the daytime classes, right? I was only a part-time student. I was attending the evening classes, so actually I never met Dwayne Peterson. Not even sure what he looks like, to be honest. What are you talking about, part-time student? We were pretty good friends up until junior high. But once we got into high school, we weren't that close anymore. Maybe that's why I didn't know my situation. Right before high school, my dad passed away and I had to move in with my grandparents the next town over. It was hard times back then with my father gone. I had to take on a part-time job to help my mom out. That's why I was forced to attend the evening classes on a part-time basis. That's where I met Dan. This guy I married today. Are you serious? This seems so far-fetched. Wait a minute. That name, Dan Peters, kind of sound familiar. Could it be try saying guy that was on the news a few months back? Something about rescuing his dad's company, which was on the verge of bankruptcy. By restructuring the whole company and introducing unique ideas, that guy? Oh yeah, that was when the piece aired on the popular variety program a few months back. That's not fair! Excuse me? This kind of means that... If I hadn't mistaken your boyfriend, if I hadn't sold Dad instead of Dwayne, then I would have been standing at the altar upstairs instead of you. 
Why is that you get all the breaks? Why do you get to marry someone super successful guy? Why? It's just not fair. There you go again. Totally not making a bit of sense. The only reason you made this mistake is because you didn't properly verify anything. Maybe you should have put more thought into it before you went ahead. This is not my fault. I mean, think about it, Maya. You spent the last 10 years thinking that you stole my boyfriend from me. You never doubted it for one second? You dug your own grave, Maya. No one is to blame but yourself. Don't shift the blame to me, like I said. I have nothing to do with your delusions. But it's just unfair. It's not right. Uh, listen, Maya. There's something really important that you're completely forgetting. What are you talking about? Did you say that your wedding was cancelled because Dwayne didn't show up? Did you ever get hold of Dwayne? He is... he's... Before you start bombarding me with messages online, it seems you have a lot other stuff to worry about. I've got plenty of worries, thank you. What are you talking about anyway? Don't you need to talk to the guy about the consequences of not showing up? Could you mean you're eligible for damages or who's gonna pay for the wedding? I mean, it isn't cheap. I should know. Yeah, you're right. What am I gonna do? I just gotta find that jerk. Martha, if you're there, pick up. Lend me $50,000. I beg you. Stop right there, Maya. Calm down for a second. Say again. I need $50,000. I have to pay for half of the wedding. That's why you need $50,000? Uh, not that I'm bragging or anything, but I heard that your wedding was on a smaller scale than mine. Why would you need $50,000 if you're splitting the cost? No, it's not just the wedding. It's, I mean, that also includes the amount I have to my boss's wife. Huh? Why do you have to pay that? It has nothing to do with your wedding. Hold on a second. Don't tell me you're having an affair with a boss's wife. Uh, I didn't figure out she would, you know. Oh my god. Impeccable timing, Maya. Right when you scheduled your wedding, she finds out about the affair, and now this. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be this way. Incidentally, did you find out what happened to Dwayne, and why didn't he show up to the wedding? I finally got a hold of him. Apparently, he was also cheating on me. He came to the conclusion that he loved the other woman more and decided to marry her instead. Can you believe it? Good gracious. Sounds like something with a soap opera. And it turns out that because we were both cheating on each other, neither of us could sue for damages. As for the wedding cost, we had to split that. In addition that I have to pay damages to my boss's wife. I see. So that's why your debt ballooned to $50,000, is that it? Yeah, so you'll do it, right? That $50,000, your husband's successful guy, the president of a company. What's a measly 50000 bucks, right? Good grief, Maya. You have to be kidding me. Huh? Why not? That's like chunk change to you. I'm not the CEO of the company. My husband is. I can't just use the funds whenever I want. Then why wouldn't you just ask him? He'll do anything you say. I think no, no matter how many times you ask, not in a million years. But I have no one else to turn to. My folks slammed the door on me and I already broke up with my boss. Come on, Martha, for old times' sake, we were best friends at one time, weren't we? So please. There's one thing you got right. We were friends. That's past tense. After junior high, I stopped considering you a friend. Please, Martha, don't say that. I think I'm officially getting dizzy. Gotta go. See ya. Childhood relationships can last forever. But only if circumstances remain cordial. Just because we live down the street from each other doesn't mean we're friends for life. She always dragged me into her selfish antics until I just got totally fed up and wanted nothing to do with her. I later heard from one of Maya's friends. Seems she's really in dire circumstances. For starters, she got kicked out of the apartment that she was sharing with Dwayne after she said her parents want nothing to do with her, so going home wasn't an option. 
The only option was to get a small one-room apartment over one market street for something like $200 a month. As for her job, she invited a bunch of people from the office and considering what went down at the wedding. She wasn't exactly welcomed back by her co-workers. I heard she eventually resigned and is now working various part-time jobs. According to a friend, she's living a theater bar life, just barely trying to make ends meet. Hey, Joanna. You know next month's mommy lunch. Can we talk about it for a second? You're in charge of that one, right? What's up? What? No, I'm not in charge of it. Millie's mom is. But the thing is, don't you think Millie's mom's tastes are a bit, uh, let's say simple? I'm kind of worried we're going to end up at some dingy diner or something. Uh, sure, I guess I know what you mean. But I thought the brewery that she chose last time was really nice. <laughs> no way! Plus, that was at night. The only thing that place did right was the lighting. Even dingy places like that will look good with dim lighting. But there's no way real influencers would be satisfied with a place like that. Oh, I see. I knew you would. So that's why I was thinking that it would be nice if you chose the next lunch spot instead. Well, I don't really eat out that much. Uh, I'm not sure I can find a good place. There's no need to be modest. I bet you eat out all the time, with your husband being a hotshot executive and all. I heard you guys stayed at the Four Seasons in Orlando. Oh, that's not what it sounds like. We took Sam for his birthday. It was a special occasion kind of thing. Sure, sure, I get it. Anyway, I was hoping you could suggest the kind of nice restaurant you might go to for a special occasion. You want the lunch to be at an expensive restaurant? Exactly. Quality costs, am I right? Be it makeup or appliances or what have you. Yeah, you're not wrong. But to be honest, I don't think I could spend that kind of money on lunch. I think it would be difficult on the other mothers as well. I'm not sure it's very realistic. Um, ugh, how should I put this, Joanna? I know that your husband has a really good job. But I don't think that makes it okay for you to look down on the rest of us. Hey... I said I'm not able to spend that kind of money on lunch either. I just think it would be best to try and make lunch as fun and affordable as we can. I have to disagree with you. In general, one or two lunches shouldn't throw anyone's family finances into disarray. If it does, it's just a sign of that person's lack of good judgment. A good wife, nay, a good mother, should be able to cut loose and enjoy herself. And besides, next month's lunch is going to double as my birthday party. So, I'm hoping people don't mind splurging a bit. Oh, that's right. Well, in that case... <laughs> that's the spirit. So... What's the best restaurant that you've been to in this town? Got it. Hmm. There's a really great vegan place called Ambiguity on 110th Street. I think it'll be right up your alley. Ambiguity? I think I've heard of it. We went there for our anniversary last year. It definitely needs a reservation. It's a Michelin star and has shown up in the top three restaurant lists a bunch of times for the city. Ooh, perfection. That's exactly what I had in mind. Let's go there. Hmm, I think we should definitely get the go-ahead from everyone else ahead of time. 
Even lunch is pretty expensive there. Uh, don't be such a negative Nancy, Joanna. But, uh, all right. I'll ask them. <laughs> I can't help it. Sorry. Let me know as soon as you get everyone's approval, and I'll make the reservation. Oh, don't worry about the reservation. I'll take care of it. Oh? Okay, uh, just so you know, this is one of those restaurants where they ask for a credit card deposit when you make the reservation. Is that all right? Reservation deposit? Is that a thing? For certain places. I think it's to prevent people from canceling last minute, or making multiple reservations, or things like that. Oh, yeah, maybe I've heard of that. Do you get the deposit back? Kind of. Usually it's just applied to the bill at the end. Ugh, why didn't you say so earlier? No problem then. I'll take care of it. Got it. I'll leave it to you then. It's going to be a birthday to remember. Thanks, Joanna. It was nothing. Glad to help. Hey, Ellie. I hate to have to bring this up, but... When can I get that money I lent you for the last lunch back? Oh, sorry about that. I totally forgot about that. I forgot my wallet that day, right? How much was it again? $58. Really? Just $58. You're really messaging me over such a trifling amount? Huh? Well, I guess so. However much it is, money is money. Wow, you just said it, huh? Okay, Shylock. Excuse me? What? $58 is nothing. If it were me, I wouldn't say anything, even if you never gave it back to me. <laughs> I bet you get called cheap a lot, huh? Actually, no. And if I was actually cheap, I wouldn't have lent you any money in the first place. <sighs> Whatever. I had the wrong idea about you, I guess. I thought you were one of those rich and glamorous types who doesn't sweat the small stuff. Yeah, you had the wrong idea. I'm just a regular person. You mean you're just a regular penny pincher? I'm so disappointed. Well, be that as it may. Please be sure to pay it back. Even if you don't think it's much, you did borrow it. And I expect it back. Oh, <laughs> you don't give up, do you? Yeah, I got it. I'll mail a check tonight. How does that sound? I'd prefer if you just gave it to me directly. Who knows how long it'll take in the mail. Uh, come on. <laughs> it's not like it's going to run off anywhere. <laughs> You think the check is going to jump out of your dirty money-grubbing mailbox or something? <laughs> really? You're too much! No, of course not. Ah, oh, whatever. Just mail it soon. <laughs> Don't get huffy now. Also, I think I'm going to have to cancel on the next lunch. I don't really appreciate you talking to me like this. No problem. Actually, I'm not sure I actually want to go to a place you recommended anymore now. I think a venue change is in order. Maybe to a nice Italian restaurant or something. You do whatever you like. After I went through all the trouble of making the restaurant, though, you just cancel like that. You act just like a poor person. I bet you've just been looking for an excuse to cancel this whole time. Sorry I didn't notice your situation earlier. 
That's enough. Bye. <laughs> Throwing in the towel already? Well, I'm sure you'll feel sorry when you see the pictures we put up on Insta. Ta-ta! Hey, Joanna! Where are you? Um, at the grocery store? I just finished work. I need you to get over to Ambiguity right away. We have a situation here. So you ended up going there after all, huh? What happened? We just finished eating. But they won't let me bill the lunch to you. What? I told them to just send you the bill, but they won't do it. The person who recommends the restaurant foots the bill, right? But no matter how many times I tell them that, they keep telling me I have to pay it. Ugh, I have no idea how a place this backwards could end up with a Michelin star. Um, I have no clue what you're talking about right now. If you eat at a restaurant, you have to pay for it. Why don't you quit bothering the staff and pay your bill before you end up on TikTok? And why would you even try to bill me for it? <sighs> because you're the one who told me about this place? Duh! Are you messing with me right now? Here on Earth? The people who eat the food are the ones that pay for it. The person who told you about the restaurant has nothing to do with it. Is this supposed to be some kind of prank or something? Am I being filmed right now? Seriously, are you messing with me right now? Am I being filmed right now? God, I hope so. You're actually serious right now? Of course. This is all your fault, so get over here and pay the bill. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I told the kids I would take them to go see a movie. I'm sure it's not all that much if you guys all split it. But everyone else has already left. Why? I told everyone it was my treat and sent them home. Baller, right? <laughs> so what you're saying is... You made the reservation, expecting to push the whole bill onto me? And then you sent everyone home so that you could pretend that you were paying the bill yourself? Now you get it. Is that really so bad? <laughs> I don't know what to say right now. Like, what is happening right now? So, you're saying it was bad? But it's your fault. For being a cheapskate. You didn't tell me it was going to be like $500 for just three people. Did you trick me? <laughs> I am so done with this. It looks like you've got no other choice but to call everyone and get them to come back. We both know I can't do that. I already told them it was my treat. I can't tell them all to come back. Well, then pay it yourself. Oh, so I guess you're the kind of person who doesn't help those in need? Ugh, your poor family. That's what I should be saying to you. I tell you what, I'll call your husband for you if you want. What? Don't be stupid. I don't see how that would help anything. Well, I'm all out of ideas, then. Guess you have to pay your bill. Come on, Joanna. Come help me. Are you just going to let my children starve tomorrow? What now? What was it you said before? If a lunch or two is enough to throw your budget into disarray, it just means you lack good judgment or something. I never said anything of the sort. 
The chat history begs to differ. Scroll up and take a peek. This isn't time for your games, Joanna. If you don't come, well, let's just say it would be a shame if something were to happen to your kids. Wow, you just up and said that. You're just going to straight up threaten me. <laughs> Whatever, just get over here. Come pay this bill already. Don't you care what happens to your children? <laughs> Ellie, I'm afraid I can't make it. But the police are on their way. What? Why? Why would the police be coming? Answer me. Hurry up! Did you know my brother-in-law made the food that you ate? Really? Your brother-in-law works here? Yep. He sent me a message a minute ago. He said there's some woman refusing to pay her bill and mentioned my name. Apparently this woman said that someone with my name was going to show up and pay the bill for her. Our last name isn't super common, so we figured it must be me. I explained things from my end, so he said he was going to file a police report. What? A police report? I explained to him very clearly I wasn't planning on paying your bill. By the way, you said you ran up a $500 bill for three people, right? Ugh. The bill would have been much more manageable if you'd just chosen a cheaper course. I know there are cheaper courses. So that means that you chose the expensive course on purpose, just to showboat. Or try and stick me with the biggest bill possible. Or more likely, a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. Don't mess with me right now. Ugh, that's it. I'm leaving. This is all your fault, you know. I didn't do anything wrong. Make sure you tell that to the police. Uh, you could just tell them yourself when they arrest you for theft or whatever. <laughs> Good lord. You really are something else. Like, literally, who does this? Anyway, just stay there. I'm on my way. I'll explain everything to the police, and I'll show them this conversation. Oh, and by the way, I never got that check you supposedly sent for the last lunch. Also, by the way, naturally, I'm going to tell them about the whole threatening my children thing. And don't bother trying to unsend any of the messages. I've already screenshotted everything. Um, hold up. I'm sorry, all right? So let's just talk about this first. Our kids are friends. That means we're friends, right? Please, just spot me the money. After you've spent all this time bad-mouthing me, you think I'm going to lend you more money? After threatening my children, you think I'm going to give you money? Yeah, you're a piece of work. But look on the bright side. Just like you wanted, you're about to have an unforgettable birthday. When I got to the restaurant, the police were already there. According to what I could gather, apparently, Ellie had dinner once with her older sister and her family. Ellie's brother-in-law said that the dinner was his treat because he suggested the restaurant. Ellie took that to mean that's how restaurants work, and so hatched a plan to use that rule to stick me with the bill. I ended up apologizing profusely to my own brother-in-law and the restaurant owner, but they were both very nice about it. Despite everything... They still thanked me for recommending the restaurant to people. 
Then the police took Ellie off of our hands. The incident exposed Ellie's true nature to her husband, who until that point thought she was a pretty great wife. And now I hear they're on the brink of getting a divorce. My husband and I had been thinking about moving once our son graduated from school anyway. So it looks like we don't need to worry about any more trouble from Ellie. And next time, I'll be sure to be more careful choosing neighborhood friends.